Welcome back to another episode of All Access with the Profs, where we bring the boom. I'm your host, Jordan Weisinger, bringing you your Rowan Sports Update. Rowan Field Hockey had two games this past week. They are looking to improve from their back-to-back -back losses to Bryn Mawr and Shenandoah. Their first game was against number 23 ranked Messiah on October 2nd, and their second game came against number 14 ranked Lynchburg on Saturday, October 5th. To see if the Profs could end their losing streak, we turn to our reporter, Gerasimos Gervasilu. Rowan's field hockey team continued their recent skid against ranked opponents this week, falling 2-1 at home to number 23 Messiah and on the road to number 14 Lynchburg. The team dropped a 4-7 on the year and now sit fourth in the NJAC. This is Rowan's fourth consecutive loss and it's their sixth defeat at the hands of a ranked opponent this season. On Wednesday, Lily Badaloni's lone goal for the Profs was not enough to recover from a two-goal Falcons lead. Rowan had seven of their 12 shots in the fourth quarter as their late bid for an equalizer was spoiled. Despite their current struggles, Rowan Field Hockey had a more promising showing in their contest against the Lynchburg Hornets. After going down 2 to nothing early on, the Profs responded with two goals of their own, thanks to Olivia Griffin and Ali Palumbo finding the back of the cage. However, just two minutes into the second half, the Hornets scored back-to-back -back goals only 15 seconds apart, which proved decisive in their eventual victory. Gracie Merrick was able to tack on one more for the Profs before losing 4-3. to three. In the coming days, they will face their first unranked opponents on September 21st when they host Widener and Ramapo right here at Coach Richard Racker Stadium. I'm Gerasimus Gervasili with All Access with the Profs. Back to you guys at the studio. Oh man, those are two really painful losses to really good teams. But the girls will be back in action to end their four game losing streak this Wednesday, October 9th against Widener. We now move to women's soccer where the girls have been busy winning. The Profs are 6-0-2 on the season and their only two draws came against Swarthmore and Stevens. The girls began NJAC play in last week's win over Rutgers Newark 3-0. Liana Sanfelice, Sarah Wiedemann and Simone Pacetti all had a goal in the winning affair. The Profs then took on the undefeated NJCU Gothic Knights at home this past Wednesday, blowing them out 3-0. To end the week, they traveled to Camden to take on the 5-4-2 Scarlet Raptors. For that, we send it to the birthday boy, Connor McAndrew. Earlier on Saturday, the Rowan Profs women's soccer team defeated the Rutgers Camden Scarlet Raptors with a final score of 3-1 in Camden, New Jersey. The Parasa team will have a combined record of 22 wins, zero losses, and three draws, pick up win number three of the NJAC season, and remain unbeaten over Rutgers Camden. Following the victory over NJCU 3-0, the Parasa made an early statement in the first five minutes of the match with junior Olivia Giordano's ninth goal of the season. Giordano posted three goals in her last match and adds her fourth goal in two games. Senior Mackenzie Clement found the back of the net with her ninth goal of the season as well. Heading into the second half, the Profs were able to add one more goal to the sheet after Clement found her 10th goal of the year in the 82nd minute via the penalty kick. With this win, Rowan moves to 8-0-2 on their season and 3-0 in NJAC play. Their next game will be Saturday the 12th at 5 p.m. against William Patterson. This is Connor McAndrew sending back now to the studios. Giordano and Mackenzie Clement seem to be virtually unstoppable so far this year. Rowan is now 8-0-2. Rowan football is coming off its first loss this season against Ursinus, 54-18. The Profs had two dominating wins to start out the year 2-0. The first was against Stevenson, 35-16, and the following week to McDaniel, 30-20. Now that Rowan had its bye week, they look to reset mentally and have their sights set on Johns Hopkins down in Baltimore, Maryland. For more on the game, here is Logan Stewart. The Rowan football team traveled down to Baltimore, Maryland on Friday and came close to upsetting number 22 ranked John Hopkins University as the Profs lost 20 to 13. Rowan quarterback Nate Myers threw for a career high 242 yards completing 28 of 44 passes, but the Blue Jays defense set the tone in the fourth quarter coming up with two interceptions to seal the deal. Rowan's defense was impressive throughout blocking two first half field goals both by Ahmad Gant who also tallied five tackles. The Profs held the Blue Jays to just 94 total yards in the second half and outgained them by 65 yards overall. 
Running back Nunez Bukula scored the only touchdown for the Profs in the second quarter, while wide receiver Michael Zarfati brought in nine catches for 84 yards in the game as well. With just 24 seconds left in the game, Rowan had marched down to the Blue Jays' eight-yard line, but JHU's Carter Hogg's interception on fourth and goal ended their chances of completing the upset. The Profs will now prepare to face TCNJ next week as they return home looking to break a two-game losing streak. From Richard Wacker Stadium, I'm Logan Stewart with All Access the Profs, and now back to you guys in the studio. Rowan drops a close one, but at least Nunez Bakula is making his way back into the end zone. Rowan begins NJAC play this week against TCNJ on October 12th at 1 p.m. That is going to do it for this weekly wrap-up of Prof Sports. Let's send it now to Aiden Doherty for his second edition of Ruley's Rundown, where he interviews Rowan's head football coach, Pat Ruley. Welcome back to another episode of Ruley's Rundowns. I'm Aiden Doherty, and alongside me today is the Rowan football head coach in Pat Ruley for yet another week. Here we are in week two, once again, outside the team house, and we're coming off a game against Johns Hopkins. Last week, we were coming off a bye week, but against Johns Hopkins, a top 25 team that Rowan just lost to 20 to 13 on the road in Baltimore, Maryland, but a lot of historical value in this game going in favor of the Blue Jays. The Blue Jays never lost back-to-back -back games since 2008. Eight. It's been 16 years and they lost the game previously against Salisbury before their matchup against Rowan. And also since 2003, they are 15 and four, now 16 and four coming off the bye week. But Rowan hung tough. It was came right down to the wire, the last play of the game. But Rowan fell in this game by a score of 20 to 13. But I'm here now with the head coach, Pat Rowley. How do you assess this game? Yeah, you know, I said to the guys going into the week, like I just wanted to see us compete. Right, I, I said, uh, you know, at the, at the end of the day, like, can I be on the headset going into the fourth quarter saying, hey, we need to stop and a score or we need a score and a stop? Like, will the fourth quarter be relevant football? And coming off of, you know, having a week, that, you know, a game the week before where we just weren't up to par in terms of our level of competition and energy and effort level, um, you know, obviously 13 days later, that was night and day. And so, while it's always tough when you got a team of that caliber at their place with some of the stats you just mentioned, you know, like working in their favor and you got them on the ropes at the end of the game, uh, you know, it's always disappointing to not come out with those games. But, you know, I was, I was really pleased with just how we competed for 60 minutes. And it was one of those games where at halftime they were actually honoring Johns Hopkins for being one of the best Division Three athletic programs in, in almost every sport and they brought everybody out it was a longer halftime and it was one of those where we I was sitting there and I was like man like it would be such a punch in the face if, if Rowan comes in here and beats them and they almost did and it was a one score game the whole way a year ago they lost to Johns Hopkins by a score of 55 to 20 and this year much more closer but one of the big takeaways the defense really had a big bounce back week they allowed just 14 points against Johns Hopkins a team that has been able to put up points in the past especially when I mentioned last year 55 points how do you feel about the defense and what were some of your takeaways by the defense and especially when you're heading into NJAC play now? Well, yeah, that, that's the big thing, you know, and I told the guys at the end of the day, like all our goals are still in front of us and I really just want to see our, our, our growth be continuous week to week, you know, as we, as we head into really a new season now, right? It's a six week season that determines who gets to represent the NJAC um, in the postseason, And yeah, the defense, you know, I, at times early in the game, we still kind of had to get our feet under us. But once we settled in, you know, we made some really big plays. You know, guys really started stepping up and contesting catches. Uh, obviously, we adjusted in terms of being able to defend the run and, um, you know, came up with two huge uh, field goal blocks at different mm -hmm. points in the game. I actually had a third that uh, they called an offsides that upon further review um, might not have been a great call by the officials. But. You know, ultimately, I think that just really how we responded with physicality and toughness was something that I really uh, you know, took away as a huge positive. When you go into this matchup, kind of how do you assess this matchup? First NJAC game, but also not just first NJAC game, maybe one of your toughest NJAC games as well. Yeah, you know, I think that when we look at it, um, you know, they're uh, watching them on tape like they're an explosive team. Um, you know, they played a game in Allentown a few weeks ago against Muhlenberg, 55-52, uh, right? And Muhlenberg's a perennial you know, team that's vying for the Centennial Conference. And, you know, we just played a couple of the other top Centennial Conference teams. So, you know, we know that Muhlenberg is a quality program. And so that's a huge, even though they've lost the game, um, you know, that's, that's a pretty impressive, you know, result. And that's their only loss right now. So, you know, when you look at kind of who they've been uh, this year so far, they can put up points in bunches. 
uh, they're they're a team that wants to spread you out and, and try to you know get guys on islands and, and put matchups together there. And you know I'm I'm expecting a 60 minute game on Saturday, and you know we just got to come out and execute. I think the plan so far in today's practice, I think we were we were good. Um, I think it was one probably the best Tuesday practice we've had to date this year. Um, guys understand what needs to needs to happen, and uh, you know I think just there's a little added level of focus with a lot of the messaging from me and the staff coming out surrounding, you know, kind of like, hey, like anything that's occurred up until this point this year, let's learn from it, good and bad. But, you know, it's a new season and really these next six weeks are the most important six weeks of the year. So, And, and a big boost to your first edge that game, you'll be home and you'll be able to be home. It's your second home game of the four games. So it's going to be a, a pretty big lift for a team that's maybe needs just a little bit more juice going into NJAC play, knowing that it's a big game as Richard Wacker Stadium, I'm sure will be packed. And it's just their second of four home games this year. But once again, thank you, Pat Rulli, for joining me here on Rulli's Rundown. Once again, I'm Aiden Doherty alongside me, Pat Rulli. Back to you, Jordan, in the studio. Thank you, Aiden, for another week of Ruley's Rundown. Now let's send it to Jake and Skyler for our calendar segment. Hi, I'm Jake Clark along with Skyler Sweeney back for another look at the calendar for Rowan's athletic teams. Thursday, October 3rd, women's volleyball at Ramapo. They secured their first NJAC win with a 3-0 sweep. Jenna Cole led the props with 11 kills and a career-high six aces. Rowan served 17 aces, their second highest of the season. Brooke Adams also added five aces and 28 assists. 10-3 run in the second set helped Verone take it 25 to 13. Bring it to 21 to 21. Rowan secured the victory in a decisive match clinching kill from Abby Chadwick. Yeah, nothing on Friday, but Saturday men's soccer took on Rutgers Camden, and a late goal by Rutgers Camden resulted in a 1-1 draw, making Rowan's fifth tie on the season. Ryan Cleary scored the goal for Rowan to give them a 1-0 lead. His sixth on the season, he intercepted a goal kick. However, Rohan Castillo scored in the 85th minute, capitalizing on a free kick to tie the game. Rowan's keeper Dylan Aportella made three key saves in the second half to maintain the tie, and the defense really showed their strength in that win for Rowan on Saturday. For sure, and back over to the court, Saturday women's volleyball with their try match. The profs won their fourth consecutive match, sweeping to sales and SUNY Maritime 3-1 in both matches. Hutton had 13 kills and Cooper led with 19. Rowan capitalized on the sales nine hitting errors to clinch the fourth set and match Rowan. Rowan had its second best offensive performance of the season with 54 kills and a .366 hitting percentage. That's very impressive numbers, and that's all we have on this week for the calendar, but we flip to next week. Tonight, women's volleyball hosts William Patterson in another NJAC matchup. They're looking for their fifth straight win in a row. Wednesday, men's soccer hosts Washington, and field hockey takes on the pride of Widener. Thursday and Friday, there's no action, but if you thought this Saturday was busy, next Saturday is jam-packed. The schedule is loaded for next Saturday. Saturday sees four separate NJAC matchups highlighted by the profs hosting TCNJ at Coach Richard Wacker Stadium at 1 p.m. for football. Along with this, we have field hockey taking on Ramapo and both soccer teams taking on William Patterson. So, Skyler, out of all of the events we have next week, what do you think is going to be the highlight game of the week? I definitely probably have to give my highlight game of the week to the women's soccer team. Um, they did a phenomenal job out there. They really kept their momentum going throughout the whole entire game. Um, it was against William Patterson. They have an unbeaten record of 8-0-2 and 3-0 in jack play. Mackenzie Clement leads the team with 10 goals, 4 assists, and a perfect 6-for-6 six six on penalty kills. Another offensive standout is Olivia Giordano with 9 goals and 2 assists in the season. Goalkeeper Calista Burke boosts a .83 goal, at, goal against average with 4 shutouts and 27 saves. Rowan averages 3.30 goals per game with a significant advantage in shots and corner kicks. That's definitely impressive, and they're going to look to stay undefeated. And while that's important, my game of the week is for the field hockey team against Widener tomorrow night. Both teams are struggling. They're sub-500, and Rowan's on a bit of a losing streak, as we've covered in the show. They've lost four straight. 
However, Rowan's six of their seven losses are against ranked opponents. Widener is not in that top 25 poll. So watch for Rowan to work through Ali Palumbo. She leads the team in goals, assists, and points. Gracie Merrick is starting to get hot as of late. She scored in two of the last three games. And Lily Badaloni, the sophomore, she's also turning on the switch. She scored against Messiah and added an assist against Lynchburg this past week. So that, for that reason, that's my highlight game of the week. And that's all we have on the calendar for Rowan Athletics this week. I'm Jay Clark, joined by Skylar Sweeney. And now we're going to send it back over to Jordan to wrap things up. I hope everyone enjoyed this week's rendition of All Access with the Pros. I hope the episode was a boom. I'll see you next week where I'll bring you all things Rowan Sports. For Jake Clark, Skylar Sweeney, and our crew behind the scenes, this is Jordan Weisinger signing off.